Hey, thanks for being here. And let's get an update on what's going on out in the world. And I know you call uh, the both sides the good guys and the bad guys. And I just wanted to start off and get your take on where we are. I mean, who has control now? Is it the good guys? Is it the bad guys? Where do we stand right now? I, I think the good guys have had control probably since 2006, 2007. But it is not full control. They are working on full control. Um, and right now we're on the brink of the next uh, you know, economic catastrophe, just like 2008. Um, they're pushing for it. They're trying to make it happen with the, the collapse of Deutsche Bank imminent. So, yeah, I think we're going to experience very similar, except this time I don't think there's going to be a bailout. So, I mean, right now, I mean, Europe is having a huge amount of troubles, just like you mentioned, Deutsche Bank. We also have the Italian banks. They're also having a huge amount of problems. I mean, how is this going to affect all the other banks around the world, especially the U.S. banks? Are, are they all tied in? Uh, they're absolutely tied in with similar customers, uh, similar uh, assets that they hold, similar uh, counterparties in the derivative market. So yes, yes if, if Deutsche Bank goes, you can kiss every bank goodbye over, over time. We just don't know how long it would take. Now, Deutsche Bank is is the largest derivative holder amongst the big banks. So obviously that will cause major chaos in, in the global financial system. Now, you also said that the good guys, they're trying to get control. They don't have full control right now. But as we know, there's so far, there's really been very little arrests. We know there's a, a huge number of indictments out there. When do you think all this is going to be exposed? Well, it, if you go back, there have been like major, major arrests that have been seen. Like Bernie Madoff was part of the good guy, bad guy battle. I mean, if you, if you talk about when did it get exposed into the open, it was uh, when Bernie Madoff went down. Bernie Madoff was so much bigger than just Bernie Madoff. Uh, the Mossad was in there. There's all kinds. That was a kind of a money laundering arm of the bad guys. And it wasn't $50 billion. It was more like $500 billion. So, yeah, the, the, I think the battles came out in the open when Madoff went down. And then it just keeps getting – there's more and more battles. Ultimately – there's enough dirt on the bad guys that uh, they will be taken down. The the pedophile rings and the, the banking cabals and, and all that stuff is, is going by the wayside. It just it does take time. Russia's in on it. China's in on it. The U.S. is in on it. Um, this is way behind the scenes. You know, all the stuff we see on CNN and and the news stations is is just trivial compared to what's going on behind the scenes. So I have I have a lot of confidence that things are gonna. Uh, um, be very good, but they have to get the old monetary system out of the way. So that's going to be very chaotic. So we have to go through this this turmoil to get to the other side. Let's start off with the monetary system. And you're saying that you have to get it out of the way. Now you're talking about the system that we're in right now. And this is a central banking system. So do you think right now the push is to uh, still crash the central banking system to bring in a new system? Uh, yes, they have to because the vast majority of the so-called assets are held by probably less than 1% and they're all hidden in offshore accounts and, and nooks and crannies. There's, there's no way to get to a new system to get rid of the bad stuff without erasing everything because they've got it all hidden away. So you can't revalue currencies. You can't do any kind of you know, jiggering of uh, rules and regulations. you got to destroy it all. And that was always the plan from the Fed, uh, you know, the, all the work I've done on the Fed Road to Ruta information, their plan was to crash the system and go back to a gold standard back in, you know, the, the late 80s or early 80s uh, with uh, when the Road to Ruta comics came out and um, uh, Alan Greenspan was kind of put in charge of the monetary system with his computer programs. So the idea was run the system as long and hard as possible soak up all the benefits of being the world's reserve currency and then crash the system when you're the largest debtor nation in the world and it, it starts spinning out of control. That's where we are right now, the, the system crash. And uh, luckily, we have the cryptocurrencies that will be there to uh, kind of be a something to transition to um, because most of the gold is held by the banks and the banksters and the very people who run the system now. We don't want them around. Um, so, yeah, it, it, I understand it's a big deal. I understand it would be mass chaos to destroy the financial system, the you know the fiat system, but you can't get rid of our controllers unless it's completely destroyed. 
So is this what all the tariffs are about? I mean, is Trump not trying to fix the economy or is he trying to crash the economy? He's absolutely trying to crash the economy. He was trying to fix it when he when he hired Steve Mnuchin, the, the uh, IT, the head of IT for Goldman Sachs, was one of the key computer market riggers. Um, I think that's going away now. They've made the decision, you know, we, we're tired of rigging the markets and we're going to crash it all down. That's why Trump's <laughs> jumping up and down about the uh, tariffs with China and, and now Europe. And there's rumors that he's going to ban all German made cars. Uh, right when Deutsche Bank is on the brink of collapse, the largest derivative holder. So it's pretty obvious that that something gigantic is looming for this summer. And uh, I, I suggest everybody just brace and get ready for it. So is Mnuchin a, a good guy or a, a, a bad guy? I would say he's a bad guy, although, you know, it, it's one of those things. It's hard to tell good guys and bad guys. But Mnuchin is a market rigger who was in the hands of Goldman Sachs and the, the banksters. Um, he was not chosen by Trump. He was chosen for Trump by the banksters who said, hey, it, unless you put this guy in, we're going to just pull the plug on everything now. And so Trump tried to make the economy work, tried to lie about all the statistics and rig the markets with computers using Mnuchin's um, computer programming expertise. Um, but it, it is really it's at the point where we've done this for so long. I mean, computer manipulation of the markets has been going on since the 60s. So it really has to come to that point where if we really want to return to a, a sovereign nation not controlled by these criminals and banksters and politicians, we got to get rid of them. And the only way to get rid of them is to destroy the monetary system because a revaluation just leaves them in charge still. I mean, what will the central bank do? I mean, are they just going to stand by while this happens? Aren't they going to fight back? Well, the, the U.S. central bank is, is fighting this fight with the good guys. I've, I've proven that in the Road to Ruta documents. You know, there are bad people within the central bank, but they're placed there by the banking cabal. Uh, there are good people within the central bank as well who are trying to destroy the old system. Alan Greenspan was one of those trying to inflate the system beyond repair to destroy it and return to a gold standard. Uh, he he did well in, in the inflation part. You know, Mr. Bubbles, they called him. Uh, but he, he faltered probably right before he left. You know, he tried to cause the crash in 87, in the early 90s, the dot-com crash. Those were all computer rig crashes uh, run by Alan Greenspan and his computer programs. So, yeah, the, the Fed's in on it with the U.S. If you look at the, the new $100 bill, it talks about overthrowing your government right there on the front. They've been looking for a way out of this system for over 100 years. They knew it was a problem when the, they created the Federal Reserve System, and people within the Fed know it's a problem. People within Treasury know it's a problem. So no, the, the bad guys will not be allowed to control the system going forward. And the, the question now is how chaotic will the, the collapse be? Will it be a slow burn or will it be, let's pull the Band-Aid and start fresh? Now, what about the other central banks like the IMF and, and the biz? Are they in on this or are they on the outside of all of what's happening here? Well, they, they know what's happening, but I, the U.S. has been leading it since day one. The U.S. has had all the gold from the Grand Canyon, more gold than anybody's ever found in the history of, of the world and have been running the show. And at any time we could have returned to a gold standard, we chose not to because the world still accepted the debt. Uh, but they try, you know, th I would say that's the bad guys, the World Bank, the BIS, the IMF. That's the bad guys control those entities. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I do think the good guys have uh, full control now and can pull the plug at any point in time. And a lot of the crimes from the past need to be brought into the open and, and shown to the public and say, hey, we tried to rig the system for as long as we can. We lied to the people for as long as we can to keep everything status quo. Now we need to get out of status quo because well, our debt is unpayable. The global debt is unpayable. And we can move to something else. We can move to an asset-based system in the cryptos. So I, I think that has given – uh, humanity an option of where to go from the unbacked fiat system uh, is just a matter of the chaos. They need to come to Congress again, and the people have to decide not to bail out the banks. And the consequences of a, a non-bailout of a too-big-to-fail system is the too-big-to-fail fails, and all forms of electronic debt money are wiped out. 
That's just kind of the way it, it works in a leveraged monetary system. So you say we're going to be moving into this transition and you're talking about cryptocurrency. I'd say, yeah. I'd say we're already in the transition. It's just it'll be moving faster and faster. And we'll be transitioning, you think, into cryptocurrencies. I think I think we'll transition into cryptocurrencies. I think uh, there might be a gold component, but not much of a gold component. Uh, and it wouldn't be the current standing of what the governments around the world claim as their gold holdings. It's ridiculous. The United States owns a whole lot more than 8,000 tons of gold. Uh, China supposedly has about 50,000 tons of gold. Russia has close to 40,000 tons of gold. So much more gold than, than what the official stats out there. So, yeah, I, I do think the cryptos are being... Um, uh, babied and, and helped along by regulators around the world slowed down at times like China saying they're going to ban the cryptos and then now uh, the President Xi just came out and said we're going to embrace blockchain technology so it, it's one of those things they just needed to slow it down to give it more time to develop so the IMF, I mean, they're still demonizing cryptocurrency. Uh, the Fed, uh, certain individuals in the Fed, they're still demonizing cryptocurrency. Well, yeah. the Fed, the Fed isn't. The Fed uh, has said nothing but big positive things. Like, was it, did I miss something uh, recently? Yeah, there was an individual. I forgot his name from the St. Louis Fed who said that cryptocurrency can never be um, a currency like the dollar because it doesn't meet the requirements. Well, so. yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I, I don't think the, the cryptocurrencies want to be a currency. He liked the dollar truthfully. Well, I think what he's saying, like it can't replace the the, the fiat system that we have today. It, it it won't stand up to all the tests. I think that's what he was really trying to say. Yeah, in, in his system, yeah, that that is correct. It, uh, cryptocurrencies will not survive in the paradigm set up by the central banking system. That is absolutely correct. But that, that that's what's dying. It's their system that's dying. So once they are dead and gone, the cryptocurrencies will be such a better system. Now, there are some people that believe uh, that the entire blockchain system was created. I think there was a paper from the NSA that's out there. They believe that the central bank might control cryptocurrencies. What do you say to that? I, I don't think anybody can control the cryptocurrencies. It's it's open. Uh, it's it's open software. So you see every transaction that happens. Was the NSA was uh, central banks involved in the creation of of cryptocurrencies, absolutely. They've been working on this since the 70s. And and absolutely, I mean, I believe Satoshi is actually Alan Greenspan, the world's best computer programmer, the guy who invented the finan the electronic financial system back in the 60s. And he blames himself for Y2K. That's how far back that programmer goes. Um, but yeah, I, I think, yes, the uh, but the United States, it, it gets back to the good guys and the bad guys. The good Good guys want a way out of this criminal system. The bad guys want to fight it. The good guys are the ones who invented the cryptocurrencies back in the you know the very beginnings in the seventies, eighties, and nineties. That's when the cryptos were really uh, kind of the, the basis was invented, and then the Satoshi white paper paper solved the double spend problem, and then it was off to the races and implemented. But yeah, definitely the good guys within the government have been working on what can we go to, if not a gold standard, because all the bad guys had all the gold, what can we go to? And they came up with the cryptocurrencies, and that's what our future is. I mean, you said we're in the transition now, but as we move into, let's say, the cryptocurrency realm, what happens to the paper money then? What happens to all the accounts and the paper accounts? Are those just then moved over into the crypto realm? No, no. There's, there's no transition that is, that is viable. I mean, you cannot, you know, take every debt of every uh, unbacked fiat system in every country and say, okay, we're all moving over here when everybody knows the problem is that debt. The debt needs to go away. Now, whether if it's by hyperinflating the currency while the cryptos, you know, become more and more established, I think that's what they they might want to do because they're going to have to make a decision very soon about whether or not to bail out banks. And if the, if the bailout of banks is a viable option for the IMF, for the EU, for the United States, then you're looking at massive hyperinflation and everybody will see the fraud for what it is. Um, if the U.S. Uh, citizens have a choice, again, it goes to Congress for a bailout or no bailout. I 
cannot see any scenario where they would uh, they would allow a bailout, even though the financial system will be crumbling at the time because of of all the anti-government and anti-banking sentiment out there right now. As we move into, let's say, the cryptocurrency realm, we won't need the central bank at that point. Well, it won't be a, a I don't think it'll be an overnight type of thing. I think uh, central banks around the world will create their own cryptocurrencies. Governments will create their own sovereign tokens. A lot of governments are already talking about that. Um, and they will compete with other tokens. Now, governments and central banks have a problem with their desire to print as much as they want. And, and in competition, that won't be a good cryptocurrency. They also have a desire to hide transactions. So you know, in competition, that won't be a good cryptocurrency and they'll be competing against currencies that are open and you can see the entire blockchain, you can see every transaction, you can't change the transactions of the past. So yeah, I think uh, the, that every country will uh, jump on board the cryptocurrency bandwagon when the unbacked fiat system crashes. And that's truthfully, that's what we really need is the United States is the largest debtor country in the world by far. We will never, ever, ever pay off the debt. And as a matter of fact, no country ever has paid off their debt. It always goes into either default or hyperinflation. So, you know, the, the talk of Congress saying, Oh no, we got to keep the budget line and we got to, we got to pay off our debts. No. That is not the idea of, of fiat money. The idea is to run it as long as hard as you can, soaking up all the benefits before the whole thing implodes. Now, the only thing that I'm worried about with cryptocurrency is that the central banks decide to create their own coin and then have all the governments say, you know, pass a law that this is the coin you have to use, almost like the fiat system. Uh, you're going to have to use the dollar. You're going to have to use the euro. You're going to have to. So that's my biggest fear is that they will try to create their own coin and then have governments pass laws to force everyone into their system. Well, if, if the people relied on the government and, and, cared about what the government thought in that type of situation. I mean, remember what kind of world we'll be living in when these banks crash. There'll be no trust in government. There'll be no trust in bankers. These are the people that got us in the problem in the first place. So they can pass any law that they want. Um, I don't think they will. I don't think that's the idea at all. As a matter of fact, if you look at what the Fed says and the Treasury says, that is not the idea. And look at the in front of the $100 bill. It says you have the right to overthrow your government right there. So that is not the plan. And any any government that restrains their population by doing something like that is going to lose. And the U.S. knows it and China knows it and Russia knows it. The world is changing and, and the, the totalitarian type of monetary system has to go away. So a government requiring citizens to only use, you know, the, the Fed coin or something like that. That country will lose out on a, an amazing technological breakthrough and economic engine that will drive us forward. Any country that, that throws up all these roadblocks will be left in the dust very fast. So when we're in this uh, crypto realm and, you know, now we transact with the banks, we pay taxes to the IRS because the government borrows uh, the currency from the Fed and the interest has to be paid back plus everything else. Once we're in the crypto realm, is there are, are there any more taxes? Is there an IRS? Do I mean, does that go away? Uh, th there's been talk of, and in Cliffhide's data, there's a like a, a tax token type of crypto. Um, but a lot of these taxes don't go for the things they're supposed to go to. The income tax was never supposed to be there. We all know that. And, you know, paying for roads, paying for uh, other people's health care and all that, you know, it's up to it's up to the people of uh, the new system. You know, really, when when the old system fails, there's going to be a whole bunch of new laws and rules because trust in government will be destroyed instantly. Trust in banks will be destroyed instantly. And it's kind of like, will we have a government in the United States that employs 35 million people? The federal government has 35 million people working directly or indirectly for it. And no, that those jobs will go away. You, the founders never wanted a, a country that had a gigantic federal government. Uh, state governments, yeah, states had all the all the rights other than what was in the Constitution. We just need to go back to the Constitution. And you'll see all, all these government programs go away because the government can't afford it anymore. They don't have any money. They don't have that kind of money. 
And yes, new systems need to be built. Will there be taxation? Yeah, definitely. Will it be uh, egregious and onerous like it is today? No, not at all, because we won't have any debt to pay off. And all these workers in the federal government will be gone. There'll be no you know, Obamacare remnants and, and all the, the insanity of what we're living through today gets instantly washed away if there's no money to pay for it. How about the banking system itself? I mean, if we can send currency back and forth without the banking system, depending on you know what the coin is, or maybe we'll have multiple coins, I don't know what it will be, but we can send it to the exchanges, we can send it to private wallets. What's the point of the banks then? Uh, they won't be. I mean, that's that's the key to understanding what goes on in the too big to fail banks and the derivative situation. These banks are highly levered and so much more than the 10 to 1 they say they are. So all it takes is, you know, 10 percent of their tier one capital to go away for these banks to implode. And that's kind of almost what happened in 2008. But that is, is what will happen the next time this this goes down, which I think is this summer. Now, what happens after that? You know, it's anybody's guess. And, you know, obviously well, we would love to be have all the debt disappear in the world. Well, all that debt is unbacked fiat promises. It's uh, that, that unbacked fiat money that the banks have leveraged so much. You know, leverage is great going up. You make 10 times your money going down. It is a killer of banks. So, yeah, it will all have to be rejiggered, not the money, because people won't trust the money anymore. We're going to have to issue a new money in the United States and around the world because and no but there'll be no debt too which is the cool part yes people will lose all their assets their electronic assets that they kept in the system but that was always going to be the case that was always the ultimate plan on the road to Ruta. there's a economic uh theory back from the 1960s called on the road to the golden age and it was a nobel prize winning theory and what it said was to get off of a go back to a gold standard, the first thing you should do is print as much money as possible, soaking up all the benefits, print money to infinity, soaking up all the benefits, and then crash the system and go back to a gold standard. And that's what's been playing out over these past 50 years. Now, did you say, uh, maybe I heard you wrong, did you say this was going to go down this summer? The, I think there's going to be another banking crisis, much like 2008 this summer. And it's, it's being set up right now. Deutsche Bank, the world's largest derivative holder, is just got nailed by the Fed again to put on a watch list. And Deutsche Bank gets downgraded. According to their, uh, their year-end uh, annual report, a, a single-notch downgrade will cost them 1.3 billion euros, and a double-notch downgrade will cost them 3 billion euros. And it, it really does depend it, it basically wreaks havoc on their derivative book. And that's when it gets really ugly, just like it did in 2008. And then what do you think happens once, I mean, if they are downgraded, what, what happens then? Like, where does it spread to? Like, what happens? What do you think happens? It triggers some of the derivatives, and then we have a, a cascading effect. Just like in 2008, the derivatives, Deutsche Bank will probably be the, the new Lehman type of situation. Uh, now, will they bail them out? I, you know, Truthfully, I don't think so. Europe is in so much trouble. The United States debt is in so much trouble. We lie about every statistic. I mean, it's insane what they've gotten away with this far. So I, I do think this is the one of the, if not the big major collapse come September again, probably because that's the end of the fiscal year of the United States. Um, it might bounce along for a few years, but really badly. As in banks going down, banks getting bailed out, people screaming that they're bailing out the banks. Um, or we might believe the Economist magazine from, what, uh, 1987 that said 2018 was the year that the uh, global currencies melt down. Now, do you, do you think Deutsche Bank, you think they know that this is coming and this is why they are laying off like 10,000 people? Probably going to be a lot more than that. But you think they're trying to head this off? Uh, they're not trying to head it off. They're trying to survive a couple more months. That's how so, that's how big it is. Their their derivative book is fifty trillion dollars, and it's wow. gone sideways. So they are screwed. I mean, you say we're in the transition, but when this starts to occur, I mean, how long is this gonna is this going to last? I mean, once it really hits, like say this summer, and you know people start to realize what is going on, and people start to wake up. 
I mean, to go from this fiat system over to a cryptocurrency system, I mean, what is, I mean, from your opinion, what, what is the time frame of all of this? I, I think it'll take, take years. I mean, there's so much to destroy in the old system that has been built up for the last hundred years. So, I, I, yeah, I think it'll take years before, I mean, ultimately, there will still be the U.S. dollar around in 10 years, but probably not many people will be using it at all. Most most likely, everybody will have left the system in the next five years and gone to uh, some kind of crypto-backed or crypto system, all kinds of different uh, potentials there um, for means of exchange, for store of value, for use in businesses to cut expenses. I mean, there's just so much that can be done with the cryptos, but it is, it's the new system and it's going to take the place of the old system not overnight but uh literally i think the old system is dying already it's been dying for a long time and the key is that the powers that be the good guys back there want it gone they want the criminal system gone and they know that you know the, the criminals can control a lot of things have been able to control a lot of things the rothschilds and the rockefellers and that that gang and the clintons and the bushes and the sources all the deep state as well um, and they want them out. So, yeah, they're going to foster uh, a very kind environment for the cryptos over the next couple of years. And they're going to, I don't see them bailing out banks, at least on the surface. They'll patch them up here and there the best that they can. But ultimately, there will be runs on banks. There will be uh, defaults on debt, uh, which there has to be, obviously, because not even countries can pay off their debt anymore. Yeah, it, it is happening. I can't tell you what day it's going to be over, but we we will be able to look back and say, "Oh my God, it was that it was the summer of 2008 and the summer of 2018 that really changed the world." So what you're saying is we're going to be like in this hybrid type of currency situation. I mean, we'll still be using the dollar in, in whatever coin. Yeah, we are right now. I mean, we're we're in you know, when you look at what is money, there's the dollar, there's all the other uh, you know, euro and the yuan and all that. And then there's the uh, stocks and bonds can be counted as money because they're, you know, they're just a promissory note as well. And derivatives can be counted as money. So there's so many different types. And now we've got the cryptos, which are asset based. Nobody's, there's no third party risk in every other asset type money wise, there's third party risk. So stocks and bonds are massively rehypothecated, meaning, you know, you think you own a share of Apple computer. Well, 10 other people own that exact same share. And it just goes round and round in the uh, high frequency tra trading realm. So it is insane what's going to happen, but it has to happen to get to move along, to move into a future that is good for humanity, not going to suck us dry. So you think that um, the banks, while this is happening, they're going to maybe go on a bank holiday where they'll shut everything down and you won't be able to move your funds out of the bank or take it out of the ATMs and things like that? Well, it, it won't necessarily be a bank holiday. It will be that the banks don't have the money. Because remember, banks are leveraged. They're leveraged lenders. They leverage 10 to 1. So for every $10, you know, every dollar that they have, they lend out 10. And that's great when asset prices are going up and everything's fine. When they come down, they're destroyed almost instantly. Just like we saw in 2008, they, you know, was it, uh, rep the representative Kajorski said we had a matter of hours before the entire system froze up had we not done that bailout. Well, th your your currency in the bank is digital. I mean, yes, I understand if you're going to the ATM, but could you move that digital currency into a cryptocurrency? Uh, you can do that right now. Yeah, you can buy any cryptocurrency you want. No, I'm saying dur during like that period, even if they, you know, they they won't allow to allow you to take out cash. Do you do you think you still have the opportunity or the ability to take the digital dollars in your account and go ahead and buy, you know, a, a cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dash, or whatever is going to be out there to get your currency out of the banking system. No. Well, at, at some point, when everything freezes up, it's over. Your, your chance to get cryptos is gone. All the exchanges, they, you know, they pay their employees in, in fiat money and they require the old system to be in place. Not all the exchanges. There are some exchanges that, uh, that don't deal just deal on the blockchain, you know, swapping crypto for crypto. Uh, but but many of them deal with the banking system already. And, and yeah, the banking system freezes up. You're not going to be able to trade cryptos. You're not going to be able to trade stocks or bonds or anything else.
I mean, your government's not going to be able to pay its bills. I mean, that's that's a really, really, really bad thing to happen. Um, it's never happened in history where the entire banking system freezes and it's a come to Jesus moment. They got to show what they got and they got nothing. It's all been you know leveraged up so high, which is great when their assets go up, but when they go down, it's instantly evaporated. That's what people need to understand is these banks and, and brokerage houses have been playing with your assets and they know just as well as we do that when the when the music stops the game is over so what happens to those people that have you know physical silver physical i'm not talking about the paper stuff i'm talking about people who've been purchasing physical silver and they have a lot of silver those people that have been purchasing physical gold and they have gold later on will they be able to take that and purchase cryptocurrencies i would i would assume yeah it depends on what happens you know, what kind of currency people go to. I, I think they will go to cryptocurrencies. I think gold and silver will have their place in the future. Absolutely. If you keep it in your own possession, it's an asset like any other asset, um, except it's it's better than any other asset. I think silver, because it's so necessary for society, for our modern high-tech world, it's absolutely necessary. Gold, on the other hand, you know, it's got the historical factor and it's beautiful and malleable, but that's about, that's about it. So I think, uh, yeah, you, you at some point when things, yeah, you won't be able to spend cryptocurrencies most likely either uh, when the when the banking system crashes. There has to be some kind of transition, and I think the uh, that's why I think the summer is key for the cryptos to be supported by the Federal Reserve and the Treasury. They want to get these means of exchange ability in place. So that you can go to Amazon and use Litecoin or Bitcoin because they know when the old system crashes, they want that in place so it won't be as bad. It'll be bad, but it won't be as bad if all that stuff is in place that you can go to a store and spend the cryptocurrency. And and if, if I'm right that the, the U.S. government was involved in the creation of Bitcoin, then and they've got Satoshi's Bitcoin, which is a million Bitcoin held by the U.S. government and a million Bitcoin cash and a million Bitcoin gold, and they can allocate that to the citizens of, of the country as a new form of money. And I think that was the idea in the beginning. So you said something about if uh, or when the system freezes up, we won't be able to use anything at that point, even, even cryptocurrency. Is that what you said? You, we, well, you can use cryptocurrency, like peer-to-peer -peer type of stuff, uh, but not not you won't be able to buy on an exchange. The exchange will be shut down. They'll take, the exchanges will 